What could be better than living on an island, you know, we're set aside from the rest of the world. Galveston's a beautiful place to live. It's a beautiful place to raise a family. And the only word, if you notice, I didn't use a tropical island, because we're an island off the coast of Texas. St. Martinsville. They moved to Galveston in 1937 because African Americans could make a better living because of the war. But we're beautiful, you know, I mean, sunshine, you know, palm trees, bikinis. <laughs> Well, this place has been here since the late 60s, and everybody that grew up here in Galveston knows Selena's Blue Room. All kinds of people uh, would visit the bar, you know, different color, backgrounds. Miss Selena, she was very accepting, you know, her and her daughter, they were very accepting, uh, open arms, they made everybody feel welcome. My very first drag show was here. That was over 20-some years ago. And uh, one of the drag queens, she had did a, a song called Clean Up Woman. And she said, hey girl, I need somebody to, to back me up. So I came out in a long robe with the broom and the little duster and stuff. And I've always wanted to be on stage, you know. That was my very first drag show. And it was here. Yeah, I haven't been to this place since Ike hit. It's kind of like an eerie feeling because we wrote it out in this place and it's good to see that they're remodeling it because it's been up since the 60s. Uh, it stood Hurricane Carla. So Hurricane Carla, Hurricane Alicia, and then the, the last one we had, of course, was Ike, Hurricane Ike. Ike hit Galveston in 2008 as a Category 3 hurricane. Hurricane Ike flooded 75% of Galveston Island. Flood of, uh, of this nature is unimaginable. Galveston is getting pummeled by wind and rain right now, and the storm is still several hours from making landfall here. As I went to the corner store, and everybody was getting their last minute things and evacuating, and I can hear in the gutters, the street gutters, gurgling sound. I never heard it, never heard it. I've been here all my life, but I'm, I never heard that. And later I found out that that was the storm surge, the water was rising. Much of the island is already underwater and the unknown right now is the storm surge. We could see the highest surge where we are right here on Galveston. The reason for that is this storm is so large. That's why it's producing such massive surge and huge waves, waves as high as 32 feet, surge as high as 20 feet. It is already overtopping the 17 foot seawall and it's only going to get worse in the hours to come. The winds and the rain picked up at around 7.30, 7, 7.30. We were just sitting on the porch, you know, long enough until it was unbearable to sit there. The wind picked up so bad. The door had a blind over it, like these blinds down here. And when I opened it, the wind just took it and pulled it off the hinges. We were afraid, so we jumped up and we went inside. Place they went to, they marked it. It was either saying nobody there, how many people were there, or it was saying someone's in there dead.
the water had resided from 12, 13 feet. It was ground level then. We left here, hit Broadway, got to Broadway right here. There's a big old boat sitting in the middle of the, uh, in the median. When you start looking at a 25 or 40 foot sailboat and it's sitting in the middle of Broadway, you know, it was bad. We get a block to the school and I can see in the distance thousands of people. Kids crying, people without shoes, people in, in night clothes, people was distraught. Everybody was on a level playing field because we all were devastated by Hurricane Ike. 75% of the island was flooded and uh, everybody lost a lot. Everybody was in the same boat because it didn't make any difference how much money you had. You couldn't buy groceries, you couldn't buy gas, you couldn't flush your toilet. So we all were even on this island. There was a, a bond with everybody, you know. Everybody came together, all races, creed, backgrounds came together, you know. People with money, people without money. We're all equal then. People that you may see in the grocery store that you've never spoken to, they helped you during that time. There's, there's this, this saying, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. The further and further away you get from September 13th, 2008, when Hurricane Ike hit this island, the further you get away from it, the more of the separation of power you see. At that point, we all were even, we all were equal. The powers that be after rebuilding you see that you haven't moved and they've gone on and on to mature. We still don't have public housing back. There are still African-Americans who haven't had their homes repaired. We're still waiting on the federal government. African-Americans and minorities are always going to feel the brunt of no matter what it is. No matter how it comes, they're always going to be the individuals who feel the brunt of it. This weekend is Martin Luther King's birthday. It's the celebration of, a, of the life of Dr. King. We've started off with the Martin Luther King parade, which was Saturday. Uh, Sunday, we had the reading of the essays from an essay contest that the kids from the high school put on. We had the, the Martin Luther King celebration at Avenue L Baptist Church last night, which was Sunday. Today, we're going to have the Martin Luther King prayer circle in about 10 minutes outside. And what does the Lord require of you, of you, of you, of you, of you, and of me, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Dr. King, whom we honor on this day, a modern day prophet of God, stated he desired his legacy to remember him as a drum major for justice. I have a dream that one day, this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. It has been a celebration of a life that was beneficial to African Americans and the entire world, really, because he opened up boundaries that just were closed. Um, he did things that were remarkable for this world.
The spirit of justice rule and reign over the community of Galveston. Transform our community into a place where the weak are protected and none go hungry and the poor are taken care of. Transform our community into a place where different races and cultures live in tolerance and mutual respect. And everybody on the grounds of St. Vincent House said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. The melodic sounds of Louis Armstrong singing What a Wonderful World conjures visions of people living in a world immersed in tranquility. My dream for the future of our world and its people is for people to realize that there is one race, the human race. In order to achieve that goal, there must be a focus on cultural awareness. This awareness must be framed at the community level, transported nationally, and encompassed globally. My dream will be fulfilled when the bridge is built that leads to world harmony. This is my dream to come true. Thank you. Galveston is 37 miles all the way around. At its widest point, it's four miles. We are the piece of land that actually stops a hurricane from being massive at the oil refineries just on the other side of Galveston Bay. When you start thinking about sea levels, I think of it this way. In 1967, you probably had maybe, maybe two blocks of, of sand before you would get to the, the Gulf of Mexico. Now, uh, I would say a half a block out, and you're in the water. Climate change is going to have to take everybody to fix it, you know. Honestly, I believe people are talking more about it than doing things about it. It's kind of like they're sitting around waiting if it's really going to happen. I'm more knowledgeable about it now than I have been in the past, and it's really scary. You don't believe it at first until you actually see something of it. And I'm just worried for my generation coming up because with everything that's going on, I don't want the earth to be in danger. It's inevitable, you know, that uh, 100 years from now, Galveston Island may not be here. I don't know if and when something's gonna happen, but I just hope I'm not here. The warnings that are being given will at some point hit on ears that understand who are in a powerful enough position to do something about it.